by the end of this video, you will see how to track purchase event on your WooCommerce store using Google Ads and Google Tag Manager. To begin, you need to make sure that you have proper access to all of the account and to verify whether you have admin access to the WordPress backend, go to the WordPress and then go to users and click on all users. Under the email, identify your email address and make sure that you have admin access to the WordPress backend because you need to have admin access unless you won't be able to add plugins, configure settings and make sure Google Tag Manager container is properly firing. Second thing is to make sure that you have proper access to Google Tag Manager container. On the left side, you can see user management for account settings. However, on the right side, you will see user management for container. Click on user management for containers and make sure that your email address has published access. If you don't have published access, you can simply click on the person and then give yourself published access. If you do not have enough permission to change your own access, you have to reach out to the person who has created this Google Tag Magic account. Next, you need to make sure that you have admin access or standard access to Google Ads account. To verify that, you can go to the admin section and then click on access and security. Identify your email address and make sure you have admin access or standard access. Both access levels are fine. You will be able to create conversion actions inside Google Ads account. Great. First thing first, we have to make sure that your Google Tag Manager container is properly firing on all the pages of the website. To do that, we have multiple options. We can either use theme.php file or we can use some other plugins called header and snippet or some other things. However, since we will need a data layer object for e-commerce event for purchase, it is good to have a plugin that can do both. Create data layer for us as well as be able to add Google Tag Manager container. To do that, we are going to use a plugin called GTM for WP. If you will go back to the WordPress backend and under plugins, click on add new plugin. This will take you to another page where you can search for different plugins. Let's search for GTM for WP. Once you will enter the search, you will find this plugin which was created by Thomas Greger. Click on install now and once the installation process has been completed, click on activate button. As soon as you will click on activate, this will redirect you back to the installed plugin page. However, if the redirect does not happen, you can just click on install plugin right here. Scroll down to the plugin and then click on settings. This will take you to the back end of the plugin where you will be have an option to add Google Tag Manager container ID. On the other hand, you can also click on this enter your Google Tag Manager ID and this will again take you back to the same page. Let's get the Google Tag Manager ID from the Google Tag Manager account. Let's go back to the Google Tag Manager account and under admin, you will be able to see your container ID right here. Let's copy this ID, go back to the WordPress, paste the ID right here and hit save changes. There is one minor issue with this plugin is that as soon as you will hit save changes, this will make the container code off. So make sure that the container code is turned on and then click on save changes one more time. Doing this should automatically add Google Tag Manager container on all the pages of the website. However, just to be extra sure, let's go back to the Google Tag Manager container, click on workspace and on the right top corner, click on the preview button. Once you will click on the preview button, this will open up a new tab, which is going to be like a temporary debug session where we are going to see all the events that are firing inside the data layer. This will make our life easier when we will be creating variables and testing different events inside Google Tag Manager. Enter any URL of your page and then hit connect. This will open up another tab, which is going to be your website. Once the page has been loaded, there are multiple ways to verify if the GTM container is properly firing on the website. The first option to verify is by clicking on the tag legacy Chrome extension. You can download this extension on your browser and then you can see if the tag manager container is properly firing off the website. All you have to do is make sure that this smiley icon, which is basically a tag, is either blue or green. If it is red or yellow, that means you have to be a little careful and recheck the settings. You can also verify the same information from this bottom left widget, which says that the tag assistant has connected. If you go back to the preview window, which is the debug session, you can click continue and then you can see the container ID on the top. Since we don't have any other installations right now, I can only see one container. If you have multiple containers, let's say Google Tag Managers, Google Analytics and Google Ads, you will see more containers next to it. However, if you click on the container and then you can see all of these events on the left side, that means your container is firing properly on the page. You can see that it says it has been loaded through gtm.js snippet. Perfect, our container is firing properly on the website and now we can move on to the next step which is creating the data layer object. To create the data layer object using the GTM for WP is pretty simple. If you go back to the plugin, 
Under the integration section, you will find an option for WooCommerce. Once you will go there, you can click on track e-commerce event and scroll all the way down where you will see the option for customer data inside data layer. This is going to add all the customer information such as customer's billing address, phone number, name, last name, zip code, etc. And then scroll all the way down where you will find another option is to create clear e-commerce object data right here. What this will do is just make sure that if there are multiple events finding on the data layer, this will clear them off. Let's click on save changes. Doing this, we should automatically be able to track purchase event. However, let's before moving to the next step, let's just do a test just to make sure everything is working well. Since we already have an item to the card, I am just directly going to the checkout page. Seems like I have already added some information, so let's place a test order. Great. I have been redirected back to the checkout page and let's go back to the temporary debug window and we can see that on the order confirmation page on the left side a new event has fired which is called purchase. If I will expand this API call I can see some information which is related to e-commerce object and I can see all the details about the event. To check whether the customer information has been properly populated, if you will go down to the data layer event, you will be able to see some other information such as user information and all the other things. This information is not being pulled on the purchase event, however this is populated as soon as the container is loaded on the website right on the first message. Great, so we do have the user information and we do have the purchase information for the e-commerce object. Now we have all the things that we needed for the event. The only thing left is to create a conversion ID and the conversion label inside Google ads account if you go back to the google ads account under the goals you will find an option for summary for conversions once this page has been loaded you can click on this new conversion action and this will take you to a new page there are four different options that we have but since we are using website and google tag manager we are going to stick with the first option we have to enter our website url you can add any page url right here and hit scan once you will click on it you can create a manual conversion action for the category let's select purchase the name of the conversion action is going to be purchase. We are going to send different conversion value based on the actual conversion data. And you can change as to the settings however you want. However, I like to keep things simple. Let's hit done and then click on save and continue. This will take us to the next page where we will be able to see the conversion IDs and the conversion label. The first option that it is representing us is to install things using Google Tag. However, since we are using Google Tag Manager, we will stick with this option. We have the conversion ID right here and then we have the conversion label right here. The only thing left is to create tags, triggers and variables inside Google Tag Manager. Let's go back to the Google Tag Manager container and go to the tag sections. When we are working with Google Ads account, we have to make sure that we have a conversion linker tag that is firing on all the pages of the website. So let's click on new and create a trigger which is going to be all pages and under the tag configuration we can select the conversion linker. The conversion linker tag is basically a tag that will fire the configuration code for the Google Ads account. This will make sure that if the URL has a Google click ID, it will save it and send it back with the, all the conversion actions. Let's rename this tag to Google Ads conversion linker and hit save. Great. Unlike conversion linker tag which fires on all the pages of the website, we don't want the purchase event to fire on all the pages of the website. We only want it to fire if the data layer has that purchase event right here. So what we are going to do is create some custom triggers and variables that will store all of this information and information about the event. To make our life a little more easier, I'm going to open both of these windows side by side so we can see what the values are when we are creating the conversion actions. So let's start by creating a trigger first. Let me go to the trigger section and then click on new. Let's click on trigger configuration. Since this is a custom data layer event, I'm going to select a custom events and copy the name of this event and paste it right here. Let's rename this trigger to custom event purchase. Now this will only fire on purchase. It will not fire on container loaded, on initialization or consent initialization or any other event on the website. So let's hit save. This is the only trigger that we need. Let's go back to the variable so we can capture all of this information and send it back. Let's create some user defined variable to capture the data layer information. The first thing we need is the currency parameter, which is inside an e-commerce object. To get anything from an object, you have to use dot notation. So let's do e-commerce.currency and let's rename this as dlv e-commerce.currency and hit save. We have to do the same thing for transaction ID, affiliation, value, tax, and ship. So let's create one for value first 
This will capture the value of the event, which is going to be this one. Since this is a data layer variable, this value will be populated dynamically. Now let's create one for transaction ID. Let's copy the variable name from here and paste it right here. I'm using Windows shortcut for Control C and Control V for copying and pasting stuff. Let's create one for affiliation. Let's rename it as DLV ecommerce.affiliation. Now let's create one variable for tax. ecommerce.tax. Let's call it DLV ecommerce.tax. And the last one we need is for shipping and coupons. So let's create one for shipping. Let's rename it as DLV ecommerce.shipping. And the last one is going to be for coupons. Let's create one for ecommerce.coupons. We also need one for the items array, so we can also store the items array information. This is also going to be a data layer object and let's create one for items. Now we have all of these data layer variable and what they are going to do is dynamically get this information based on the user. If there is a new user who does a purchase, for them the ID is going to be 70. So this transaction ID is going to be 70 and so on. Now let's create some parameters that will correct the user data based on this billing information that we have. So let's create some more data layer variables for capturing this information. Let's create first one to capture user's first name, last name, email address, and all the other stuff. Let's get the customer's billing first name. And let's rename this as DLV customer's billing first name. Let's capture the last name. And let's rename this variable as DLV customer's last name. Let's also get the address. We need this information so we can send dynamic data back to the Google Ads account. And then we need their city. Let's capture the city information. Let's rename it as DLV customers billing city. Then we need one for state. Let's do DLV and state. And then we need one for postal code. Let's create one data layer variable for postal code. And lastly, we need one for country and email address. So let's create first for country. And then we are going to create one for the email address. I also see that we have phone number here. So I'm also going to capture the billing phone number. and rename this as DLV phone number. Let me see if I have missed anything else. And seems like we got all the information. Great, now we can go back to the tag section and start creating the conversion tag and remarketing tag for the purchase event. To create the conversion tag, let's click on new. And since we only want the tag to fire on the purchase event, I'm going to select the custom trigger that we have built. And under the tag configurations, I'm going to select the conversion tracking tag. We have not created the conversion ID constant. So let's copy the conversion ID from Google ads account and let's create a constant variable for this one. So let's click on constant because the conversion ID is not going to change. Let's call it G ads conversion ID. And let's also create a constant variable for conversion label. It will make our life a lot more easier because we might need to use the same information at more places. So let's create a constant variable for conversion label. Let's rename it as Google Ads conversion label. And this one is for purchase. Let's make the piece smaller. Great. We have the conversion ID under e-commerce dot value. We have transaction ID under DLV e-commerce dot transaction ID. We have currency code under e-commerce dot currency. So let's select that. 
we do have product level information so one option is to add the items array right here like this or we can simply select it to data layer we also have customer information and we do have a variable if you go back to the data layer for the purchase event we see that we have a parameter called new customers is whether it's true or false so we can also set this parameter however we haven't created that one we can create a new data layer variable for this so let's create a new data layer variable which is going to be for new customer and let's rename it as dlv new customer since we do not have customer's lifetime value we can skip this option and we do have user information so let's create a user provided data variable let's click on new we have email address under customer dot email we have phone number information we do have their first name so let's select first name we do have their last name we do have their street under address then we have the city information right here we do have their state information and we also have their country information the postal code is also provided under postal code Let's rename this one as user provided data for purchase and let's hit save great we also have shipping information at this point the postal code for shipping and billing is the same so i'm going to select postal code the country is also the same as billing country we don't have a delivery date however we do have shipping cost so let's select e-commerce.shipping cost and great, these are the, all the things that we needed for this purchase event. Let's rename this tag as Google Ads Remarketing Tag for Purchase. Let's make sure the P is smaller and hit Save. Great, now we can do the same thing for the Conversion Tracking Tag. Again, since this event is only going to fire on the purchase event, let's select that. For the Remarketing Tag, I'm going to select Remarketing Tag. Let's import the Conversion ID. Let's import the conversion label. Let's also send some dynamic information. The name of the event is purchase where P is smaller. The value is inside e-commerce.value right here. The items array is under e-commerce.items. And we don't have any customer information so we don't want to send them. We don't have any user ID so we can also skip this one for now. Let's rename this tag as Google Ads Remarketing Tag for Purchase. Great, and we do have user information at this step, so we can also create one extra tag, which is going to be user provided data. Under Google Ads, you will see this option for user provided data event. Let's add the conversion ID right here. And then let's also select the event parameter that we just created a few minutes ago. If you will expand this one, this is the same one that we are using for the purchase event tag. Great, now let's rename this tag as Google Ads User Provided Data and this event is firing on Purchase. Great, now we have created all the tags, triggers and variables and it is really good to test just to make sure everything is working alright. So let's open the preview window again and for our sake I am going to open the website on the left side and open the debug window on the right side. To make our life a little more easier, I'm going to add multiple products. So let's also add vintage backpack and let's also add the smart LED light. Now we can go to the checkout page. And since I already have filled out the checkout information, I'm just going to hit place an order. And once I click on place an order, this website is going to redirect me back to a thank you page. Once the thank you page has been loaded, we can see that the purchase event has fired and the conversion tracking tag, remarketing tag, and user provided tag has all fired. You can verify the same information from this new container that has loaded on the page. And you can see that the conversion tracking tag has fired and we have the remarketing tag that has fired. You can also verify the same information using the Chrome extension ex window. You can see that there is one conversion tag that has fired and it has one purchase event and there is one for shipping and other details. Great. Now we have successfully configured the Google Ads conversion tracking and we can go back to Google Tag Manager container and make sure all the changes have been published. So let's rename this as Tracking Academy. Google Ads Purchase Event. And let's hit publish. If you want to see how to configure begin checkout event, you can click on this video right here.